Hello, and welcome to Great Kids Up Close, our first episode of 2018. I'm Bryce Taylor. And I'm Bassin Saw from the City School Student Media Team. Thanks for joining us for Episode 6 of Season 7. We're excited to share with you the latest from City Schools. From helping in the community to being inspired by our students. On Great Kids Up Close, you will see the real stories of what's happening across Baltimore City Public Schools. It's been a cold winter, but we're keeping it hot with a nice lineup of stories. In this jam-packed episode, we'll check out a cute pre-K program at Lakewood Elementary, see first and second graders learning to code, and students take a field trip to Johns Hopkins Hospital. But that's not all. We'll also check out a new robotics club at Tench Tillman Elementary Middle School. Then we head on out on two stores related to Career and Technology Education Month by visiting the nursing program at Patterson High School and the dental assistant program at Vivian T. Thomas Medical Arts Academy. And our last thought will be a little different as we ride along with a dedicated member of the facilities department during this brutally cold winter. So let's head out to Lakewood Elementary School where our littlest learners are showing off how much they love school. Amani is here with the story. Take it away. Hey everyone, it's Imani here, and recently during American Education Week, we visited Lakewood Elementary and followed the pre-K class around for a full day of fun and performances. Happy American Education Week! To help celebrate American Education Week, teachers set up hands-on and interactive learning activities from money management to running businesses such as floral shops and bakeries a play-based curriculum to live it out, to use the vocabulary that's associated with it. And it's all real life stuff, real world um, kinds of activities. Oh, thank you so much. Both fathers and grandfathers who came to the school to attend a breakfast and watch Thanksgiving performances put on by pre-K students with the help of their teachers. Two times a year, we have uh, a day that's just for dads. We have the children to come in and do presentations and things like that and songs. Just a way for them to come and have breakfast and just be at peace. In Baltimore City Public Schools, enrolling in pre-K is a big factor in determining future successes in school and life. And at Lakewood Elementary, they're instilling the love for learning every day. Well, I've always loved education at all levels, from pre-K to higher education. As the world progresses, then we are the ones that have the charge to help prepare the students to be the best they can be in this world. Like I said, it's never too early to look into enrolling your child in pre-K. Check out www.baltimorecityschools.org slash early learning for more info. This has been Imani Humphreys-Torres for the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. If I could only be five years old again, the fun I would be having. Well, pre-K registration is right around the corner, so... Ha ha ha. Okay guys, next stop. Back in December, first and second graders from Calvin Rodwell Elementary participated in an hour of code. For these young scholars, their excitement to learn the basics of coding shows how valuable this type of learning can be for students. Jalen Taylor was on the scene. Take it away. Hey, this is Jalen. I'm at Calvin Rodwell Elementary School, where first and second graders are doing an hour of code for Computer Science Education Week. So let's check out our little coders. The first graders were the first to start the Hour of Code, but they were learning through activities on paper to understand the basics of coding by way of arrows and letter direction games. And that's usually what I start my lessons out with, with the younger grades. But So before we even touch an iPad or touch a Chromebook, we always learn how to code on paper. Coding is a thing that we do to do something like inside of a computer or a phone or a paper. All right, all my friends should have their eyes on the board. Tomorrow we have to get from here to here. Which way will we go? Up, down, left, or right? Very good. They learn the cardinal directions. They learn how that you have to be very specific when you're giving computers a direction because you can't just talk to a computer and expect it to know, you know what you want it to do. So we start on paper by drawing the different arrows. We had to get from spot A to spot B, and so we practice drawing arrows and learning north, west, south, and northeast, southeast, we learn all the directions in order to prepare them to work like my second graders on the computer so they know all their directions. The first graders loved learning about coding and couldn't contain themselves in sharing. It looks like we're making an eye. Ah. So once I saw this go, it goes this way, then I saw it go this way. Once the first graders finished, second graders stormed the media center for their turn at the eye of code, but they worked on coding through gameplay. To bounce the ball right to this red thing right there, reset, and let me 
Yes! They're so proud of themselves when they actually figure out a puzzle, especially have some of my high flyers in here who they get done the puzzles really, really fast and they're my class helpers, so they go around and they help the other students. And when the other students get it, they're like, thanks for your help, I got it. So they're just really excited to learn. Coded in Schools, an organization that provides computer science training and programs throughout city schools, is dedicated to bringing coding to our students. Every sector, every job now involves some sort of computer science and computational thinking and so it's really just a foundational skill that we need to make sure our students are learning early so that they're on a level playing field or, or closer to a level playing field with their peers. This is not offered um, in a lot of cities across you know, the United States and I think this is a great opportunity to introduce them to this and not only just coding on a computer but just all components of STEM, the engineering, the technology, the math, all of that combined you know, with the coding, I just think it just gives them a better learning experience and they have fun. That's the most important thing is to have fun learning. From working on games to learning the basics of coding, students at Calvin Rodwell are definitely getting ready for our technology world. So get coding. This has been Jalen Taylor from City School's student media team. See you next time. Wow, these kids are so lucky to have this chance at such a young age. And a special thanks to our wonderful partner, Code in the Schools, for bringing this type of learning to our students. All right, everyone, it's time for our first break of the show. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. Work is underway on modernizing school buildings, like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building, Building a brighter future together. I just really just wanted to take care of my family a lot. I knew that like I could be the one to sort of make my family proud, make the city proud. And so when I'm like studying late at night, I just remember that my family is like dependent on me. And so it means a lot to me that if, if I can just make that dream come true. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have you ever tasted a squaffle? How about a not so crabby patty? Tune into the City Schools Cooking Show to see the delicious things culinary students are cooking and serving up, featuring great recipes with low cost ingredients fit for healthy eating. You can watch right here on Education Channel 77 or go to www.vimeo.com slash city schools for the latest episode. And so in many ways, I think my Baltimore is one where there are black people working in community with institutions and organizations that are working on behalf of their community without uh, the need of other outsiders to come in to do that. Hey, welcome back to Great Kids Up Close, season seven, episode six. Okay, so let's keep the show going. Now we're headed to Johns Hopkins Hospital where students in the STEM Merit Program at Arlington Elementary Middle School took a trip to learn about robotic surgical instruments and what it takes to become a medical doctor. Roll it. We included a new program at Arlington this year called the STEM Merit Program. We're at the surgery unit at Johns Hopkins and um, they learn all the different techniques that they could apply to either high school or college courses. Well, today here in John Hopkins, we are going to be working on some robotic stuff that they actually they use on actual humans. On that machine, I was trying to cut out the circle um, from the tissue with the um, instruments. Basically, they were telling us about how they got to being surgeons at John Hopkins. Um, also, they um, kind of told me how long it would take and like how much work it is to get there. We care for injured patients all the time, and to be able to 
deliver that same care, I think about my own personal experience. And that moment inspired me. It inspired me to figure out how do I give other people the same second chance that I was given. When I'm an operator, I'll take a snip and then I'll push away with my hand and start opening it up. And that opens things up so the next bite I take is a little bit easier. So like it would be a camera inside your body while they use your like two hands and stuff. So you would have to like take stuff from out that's like that don't supposed to be in there. My biggest hope is that they realize that just because of where they are in life now or what they feel as though their personal level of education or career asp aspirations are, that they can see that it's not just one door. Like there are many doors that these kids can go to, they can get through. And um, the biggest barrier that we face is they get stuck in this tunnel vision of how their lives are gonna be. And they don't get to see a lot of the things that in the future could be their lives. Now that's what I call hands-on learning. Absolutely. But it doesn't stop with the last story. Now we get to see how a brand new robotics club at Tench Tillman is giving students an incredible experience. And Jasmine LaPree was there to cover it. Let's check it out. Hey everybody, this is Jasmine LaPree here to check out the brand new robotics club at Tench Tillman Elementary Middle School where these kids are gearing up for a big competition. Right now, the students are reprogramming the robot in order to make it drive. I'm here with Raymond. So Raymond, can you tell me about what you guys are doing? What we're doing, uh, what we're doing is right now, we are putting our USB inside the computer so we can program, and our program will, will lead to the, our robot brain. So when we put it inside of our controller, we'll be able to drive. I love the robotics club and I love being here. Um, I never thought that I would be much of a coder or um, an engineer, but this really brought out of a side of me that I never really saw, so it means a lot to me. I'm motivated to come to school because the robotics club has has something for me to do at the school. They're applying what they're learning in classrooms to able to be able to build this and to be able to program it and how it applies to the, their real world after high school or after college is that there are careers in which these skills directly apply to what they would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel like I feel like robotics can help me become an engineer one day. I have a competition coming up. How are you guys preparing for that? Well, I think it's going to be fun and it's going to be scary at the same time, but I really hope we win. And what we're doing is we're doing the same stuff we're doing. we prepare and we're going to get ready. And I hope, we, I hope we win. We're preparing for it by right now we've tried making an autonomous, autonomous, um, program so that in uh, 15 seconds it can move by itself, hopefully get a cone up on top of the uh, stand, I guess. <laughs> Do you know what the judges are scoring you guys on? We get scored by our automaticity, which means the robot got to drive by itself for about 15 minutes until we start our round. And then after that, we get judged on our park and after the round over, we get judged by these giant combs, like if we land on a certain comb and we get it in our area, we get points for that too. Mission accomplished. After multiple attempts, the students were able to make the robot drive. Robotics has these kids motivated for school and eager to learn more. This has been Jasmine LaPray for the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. Wow, you can really see how interested the students were in robotics. Very inspiring. Very true. Students need to have a well-rounded experience in school. We have to take a short break, but we'll be right back after this commercial break. Everyone has a role to play when it comes to making sure each student is in school every day. By working together, the entire school community can create a school climate that makes school a place where students want to be and a place where teaching and learning can thrive. Schools where students and families feel welcomed, supported, and respected reinforce a culture of high attendance expectations and are exciting places to be. So do your part in making sure that all of our students are in school every day, ready to learn.
college life so far how you expect it? I mean, it's not the glamour that you see on television and everything. I mean, it's a lot of work, especially transitioning from being a high school student to a college student because you have like a lot of free time, so you have to learn how to balance that, like who your professor is and how to study, how to make sure you're on your best for each and every class. So it's like really having to have self-control over yourself to say, I want to do my best. What is the number one problem that youth face in Baltimore? There is not enough investment in their future. Being in Baltimore, how is your environment affecting the way you think? You only see the murder rate. Like Those are the things you see and pay attention to because we've internalized anti-blackness and internalized uh, self-hatred about uh, not just ourselves, but the city we live in. I am a Baltimore City Public School student. I am a Baltimore City Public School. I am a Baltimore City B. Salut, je suis une élève de Baltimore City Public School. So I am a student of Baltimore City Public Schools. I am a student of Baltimore City Public Schools. We are Baltimore City Public School students. And we celebrate diversity every day. Hi students and families, you can get to thousands of free online books in three easy steps. First, log on to www.kidsa-z.com or download the Kids A through Z app. Next, enter the teacher username. You should have received this already from your teacher. If you haven't, ask for it at school tomorrow. And finally, click on Reading Room and pick a book. If you need any help, please ask your child's teacher. Welcome back to the latest episode of Great Kids Up Close, Season 7, Episode 6. For our next two stories, we are taking a dive into our career and technology education pathways with a story on nursing and then one on a dental program. Up first, Patterson High School and the nursing program with reporter Jacqueline Hammett. Take it away. Hey everyone, Jacqueline here to discuss the career and technology education pathway for nursing that gets our students certified to work and ready for college all at the same time. Let's check in as they are preparing for an exam. With this program, and like I, I stressed to them, is that this program enables them to be able to write out of high school to get a job. Lisa remained with the patient and she called for help. Why is it important to call for help? The first activity dealt with a scenario a nurse would have to face in a hospital and to identify what they did wrong. Because you know, like, you're supposed to have like the bed rail, the side rails up. And the bed is always supposed to be low in because it tells you what not to do and what to do. So when you get to the real work world, you already know. A big part of nursing is being able to ensure safety for patients, co-workers, and knowing how to respond when confronted with an emergency. Because it can be patients that's paralyzed, they can't get, get out of the fire. It can be patients that may be deaf, so they can't hear the fire alarm. You get any type of disease or being sick at all is scary. It made me become more aware. Visiting hospitals to job shadow, becoming certified nurse assistants, and changing people's lives are the heart of this pathway. We go to Bayview like every year. So each year we see different parts of the hospital, places you could work, different types of things you could do in the nursing field, and there's a lot of different fields that you can go into. They'll have to sit for a certification exam, and then once they pass that exam, you are a CNA a certified nursing assistant. So that is like A plus right there. This is my this is what I want to do in life. I want to go to college and work as a CNA so I can help pay for college. I want to find a way to help uh, change people's life uh, and be a help to people. Getting your life in the right direction is a challenge, but the students in the nursing pathway are taking steps each day to become certified and make an impact. This has been Jacqueline Hammett reporting for the City School Student Media Team. See you soon. Now that is how you get a head start on a career. Love seeing how motivated they are. And if you thought that was cool, now we get to see two students who are on their way to becoming dental assistants. Ramel Gaynor is here with that story. Hey, this is Ramel Gaynor. And did you know that a mobile dentist lab goes around the city to help our communities? 
Well, neither did I. But the students in dental assistance programs at Vivian T. Thomas Medical Arts Academy got an up-close experience. We're providing dental services for our students here at this school and also the students at Franklin Square Elementary Middle School. Students have the opportunity to assist the dentist on the bus so they can get their clinical experience before they get certified this year. So I'm just so happy that they're able to actually put everything that I've taught them, all of the skills that we've done in the classroom, they're able to apply it to real patients. Before patients arrive, Jabria and Taylor help dental assistants prepare for the day. They set up your composite, your everything before it even the patients even come because the do, the dentists work so fast, mm -hmm. so they want to have everything prepared. They should put the instruments into sterilization before it hits the autoclave, and the autoclave you got to package the uh, instruments so it, it can really be sterilized. I have been able to um, do hands-on um, X-rays and cleanings. They actually taught us a lot and um, it's just been good. They are very helpful and they're actually very nice. Students in our career and technology education pathways, like the dental program, thrive off of real world opportunities that prepare them for the future. A lot of dental places um, want workers who have experience because they don't want somebody that's brand new because they don't think that they know what they're doing. So they want somebody with, with experience under their belt. There is no doubt Jabria and Taylor love this experience and will certainly be moving forward with their dental careers. Be a prosthodontist. Well, a prosthodontist basically makes false teeth for older adults and younger people. So I, I'm trying to get into either Stevenson, Towson, or Goucha. And I want to do like business so I can run my own dental office and take pre-dentistry check to get into dental school because I want to be an orthodontist. If any of our viewers are interested in learning more about the dental assistant program, hit the baltimorecityschools.org slash CTE. This has been Ramel Gaynor for the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. Now that's pretty cool. A mobile dental lab helping the community. That's major. And our students get real experiences. Plus, earning a certificate is a big deal. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the question, question of, of the, the show. show. Okay, so earlier we saw students from Arlington Elementary Middle School go to Johns Hopkins Hospital. What were they learning about? Was it A, surgery, B, evolution in dogs, C, medicine, or D, the heart? The correct answer is coming up right after these messages. Stay tuned. These are our future, engineers and electricians, software designers and doctors, construction workers and child care providers. They will build apps and houses, create menus and video games, work with cutting edge technology and kids. They'll be found in classrooms and courtrooms, construction sites and computer labs. They are Baltimore City Public School students. They are career and technology education. School cafeterias have been making some changes. Whole grains, whole milk, fresh fruits and vegetables, some of them delivered from the district's own farm, and it's all free. Every city school student can now eat breakfast and lunch free every day. It's been good so far. Because it's like they gave me a choice, and I like having a choice. Now that's something to snack on. Modernizing school buildings for Baltimore City students has begun, like right here at Arundel Elementary School. Amazing new spaces to learn in. Yes, through this program, schools and communities are being brought together in a brand new way. And I'm so proud to be part of this effort. That's right. Construction jobs are open and internships are available. Discover more about the program at www.baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building a brighter future together. A lot of exciting things are happening each and every day in Baltimore City Public Schools. Our students are learning, excelling, growing, and achieving as they prepare for college and careers. You can see our students in action and the work they're producing right here on Education Channel 77 and online. If you'd like to watch more stories on the exciting things our students are doing in Baltimore City Public Schools, please visit www.vimeo.com slash city schools. I'm a first generation college student, so there wasn't much help from like my, from home with the process. Like they encouraged me, but they didn't really know how to go about the process. So I worked here at North Avenue last year as student Congress president, and I 
received a mentor, Dr. Jessup, who works here, and she helped me with the college process, her and her husband. If I didn't have her, then it would have been way harder than what it was. Welcome back. Now it's time for the answer to the question of the show. Earlier, we saw students from Arlington Elementary School go to Johns Hopkins Hospital. What were they learning about? Was it A, surgeries, B, evolution in dogs, C, medicine, or D, the heart? The correct answer is A, surgeries. And a special thanks to Johns Hopkins Hospital for the hands-on demonstrations. In our final segment of the show, we're going to do something different. Back in January, we rode along with the facilities department as they answered call after call about the conditions of our schools. The cold was extreme and highlighted many issues with our school buildings. So let's take a look with Xavier Plater. Hi, I'm Xavier Plater reporting for the City School Student Media Team. As many of you may know, Baltimore City Public Schools has been heavily impacted by the extremely cold temperatures the region has faced in the recent weeks. Today, We'll take an inside look at what members of the facilities department at City Schools have been doing to restore order and comfortable learning environments for our students. Bill Levy, an area's facility manager, or AFM, takes us around the city as he responds to different issues concerning our school buildings. I, I do it for the kids. I, I, you know, people say, well, do you have kids in school? Yeah, I have 80,000 kids in school. Even if it's not my building, if I can help improve a building, Turn that's why I do North this job. We had an issue in the library overheating, so we took care of that. And then the gymnasium had no heat at all. It hadn't been running all year. That's now been repaired. So we're going we're gonna to confirm that all these repairs were done. Then we need to get to our two other schools. 73 degrees. So we will resolve that quickly. Although the facilities department is busier than usual because of the harsh winter conditions, they also perform routine maintenance periodically throughout the year to uphold our school buildings. All AFMs and technicians are deployed to schools and regions. These recurring visits are referred to as a blitz schedule. Our lead tech goes out and walks the school and he flags concerns, facility concerns. Do I have a broken window? Do I have a door that doesn't work? Any, any real facility problems that they may have. Boilers are somewhere between 20 and 25 years old. Because of the infrastructure in Baltimore City, and it's not just our school buildings, it's Baltimore City. If you drive around now, you see all the broken water mains all throughout the city. Well, that's what you see. Underneath this asphalt, there's a whole other world of infrastructure that supplies our utilities. It's just as old or older than our school buildings. So if we're in a neighborhood that has a high gas demand, we can get flame failure because there's not enough gas service in that neighborhood. So that can shut a boiler down. If you don't have a guy in every building, you wait till somebody comes into the building or somebody reports that it's cold. So then you have to fire up the boiler again. We've had that issue in multiple buildings that I know of. Old buildings with so many problems are not good places for our students to learn. Continue to advocate, help give our students the buildings they deserve to learn and to grow in. This has been Xavier Plater from the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. So hopefully all of our viewers out there will continue to advocate for city schools and push towards improving our schools. Yes, we need all the support we can get. So that's it for this episode of Great Kids Up Close. Thank you for joining us and sharing the wonderful stories of our students. Be sure to watch Education Channel 77. And for more, head to vimeo.com backslash city schools. Or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are everywhere. And if your school would like us to cover a story, email communications at bcps.k12.md.us. I'm Bassin Saw. And I'm Bryce Taylor. See you next time on Great Kids Up Close. Bye. Bye.